I recently spent a ton of time testing different NVMe drives in external NVMe housings as well as comparing them to ready-made SSDs. Now this is one of the videos in this series and in this video particularly we're going to talk about whether or not it's worth it to get a NVMe drive with a PCI 4.0 connection. Now I am looking for a solution to extend the storage of my M1 MacBook Pro. This is because of course Apple's internal storage is relatively expensive and I want to be able to expand a little more and of course also be able to edit 4K and those kind of things. And there, fast drives is one of the deciding factors in terms of how enjoyable the experience of the editing will be. So that's what I'm coming from. However, in that space of NVMe drives, you can do a ton of things and there are all kinds of different housings, drives, and of course combinations. And for that exact purpose, I set out to test multiple different ones and I basically got sent a couple of NVMe drives as well as housings to test this out. So as my transparency, these drives have been sent to me so that I can test these out and present you these types of results. The companies have not paid me and they're not getting to see these videos before they are getting published. Now in terms of the housings for these tests, I have the Yoda Master, one from Acasis and one from Orico. Those three are USB 4, which theoretically has a throughput of 40 gigabits per second. And then we have one from Icybox, which is a 3.2 USB drive, which with macOS sadly does not perform up to the standard it could. So that's something to keep in mind. However, for this test specifically, the Icybox housing was not really all that interesting because of course it only supports a max throughput of 20 gigabits per second. And that is with a 3.2 compatible device. Mac OS or MacBook Pro devices, however, don't support USB 3.2. They're falling back to USB 3.1. So this housing basically is out of the race for this particular setup. However, in those other tests, it might still be interesting. So check out the other videos about this to make sure that you don't miss out on that. But now to the more important, which SSD drives were in these tests. And there we have the 980 Pro from Samsung. And this is the PCI Express 4.0 drive that I was able to test here. This has a price of 319 euros as the time of this recording. And all of these SSDs have two terabytes of storage. And so as you can see on the screen, we have a price per gigabyte, which is around 16 cents. This is a PCI Express 4.0 connection type. And we have a read and write of theoretically 7,000 megabytes per second and 5,000 megabytes per second respectively. Now, this is to be seen whether or not this actually outperforms the other drives in this external housing. Because if we go back to the housings, there you can see that none of these actually support 7,000 megabytes per second read or anywhere close to 5,000 megabytes per second in terms of its write. So let's see how that actually pans out and if it is worth it to spend 16 cents on every gigabyte if you go for the Crucial P5, which is the drive that I have built right here. And that one only costs 185 euros as of recording this video. And that's a per gigabyte price of almost half of what the Samsung Pro costs. However, this drive is also not quoting the 7,000 megabytes per second or 5,000 megabytes per second for the write speed. It is only quoting 3,400 and 3,000 megabytes in the write department. And then we also have two more drives with the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, as well as the Western Digital Black SN750. Now all of these drives, except for the 980 Pro, are quoting read speeds of around 3,500 megabytes per second and around 3,000 megabytes per second in the write department. But let's see if that also stays true in my testing. Now before we jump into these results, I wanna quickly mention how I did these tests. Basically, taking every single drive into every single housing to see which one performs best with which drive in which housing. Now with these combinations, I ran speed tests with the Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Testing Tool, as well as the Amorphous Disk Mark Tool 4.0. I also ran the Amorphous Disk Mark tests on a Intel MacBook Pro, as well as my new M1 Max MacBook Pro. And lastly, I also did a folder transfer test with a program called Carbon Copy Cleaner. The folder had 101 gigabytes in size, was transferred to the drive, and then also transferred back to the internal drive so that I had a read and write duration, how long the actual transfer would take. Now with the test results from the Blackmagic Design disk speed test and the amorphous disk mark, you can clearly see that the write speed is significantly higher for the PCI Express 4.0 card, the 980 Pro from Samsung. 
However, in the REIT department, the Samsung 970 Plus as well as the Western Digital Black SN750, those are either equally as fast or actually faster than the 980 Pro. And you have to remember that these drives are significantly cheaper than the 980 Pro. The only drive that really didn't quite cut it was the Crucial P5. This one is also the least expensive, however, it never showed more than 1200-1300 in the read speed and around the same number in the write speed. So this drive, the Crucial P5, kind of like put itself out on the sidelines. However, the 970 Plus, as well as the Western Digital SN750, those two in the read department are quite equally as powerful as the 980 Pro, just in the write speed they're not quite as close. Now looking further at the results from the file transfer, we again have the 980 Pro at the top, and this time around it had 55 seconds for the read speed, or transferring the data from the drive to the internal drive, and we had 54 seconds for the write speed. Now this is kind of to be expected because, based on the disk speed tests, the read and the write speed of this drive are pretty much equal. So in that sense, this made a lot of sense. Now with the other drives, you can see those took longer in both ways. The Western Digital Black SN750 gave us the best result in the read speed, and that was again kind of to be expected because the synthetic benchmarks actually kind of gave us that result. However, in the write speed, of course, the 980 Pro is vastly faster than all of the others because it can also give us that speed, which the others just are not able to do, despite having quoted that they are also being able to write in 3000 megabytes per second based on the technical specifications, but the drives are not able to do this. So funny enough, these chipsets of these housings actually support PCI Express 4.0 better than they do with the PCI Express, which is in those other drives. And in this test, the P5, which previously kind of didn't quite perform as well as the others, actually kind of performed similarly to the other drives so that is also something to take into consideration. Now I think it's time to just share my opinion about this. Because of course you can see the results, you can see that there is a significant change in the write speed when you are going with a 980 Pro or a PCI Express 4.0 card in your external NVMe housing. However, would I consider that a smart investment? I don't think so. Because for me personally, 99% of the time I am more reading from these drives than writing to them. Of course, transferring files onto these NVMe SSDs is nicer or faster when you have the 980 Pro, but again, that is usually something where I don't necessarily care as much about that speed. What I want these drives for is to be able to edit 4K, 8K footage from my laptop, be able to have that footage on these drives without needing to transfer them into the internal drive. And for that purpose, all of these gave me great results. So I was able to play back pretty much any 4K and 8K footage. I even used raw cinema raw light footage from Canon to test this. And I was able to play back footage in Premiere Pro easily with any of these. Now, what it comes down to is really the price and the willingness of you to invest into this or not. For me personally, I would rather take a four terabyte drive, which may cost the same as the 980 Pro and two terabytes, but go with something like, for example, the Samsung Evo 970 Plus. So that's my opinion on this matter. If you want to check these out, of course, I have links to all the housings and drives in the description down below. And I will also have links to the other videos about this series in terms of the testing of these drives and comparing what is kind of the best investment to be made here in the description as well. If you have your own experience with NVMe drives, of course, you can share those in the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.